Hi, this is Len Calabrese coming at you from the Cleveland Clinic. Um, really, uh, really pleased and proud to join Jack and uh, all this uh, cavalcade of uh, 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 key opinion leaders, experts in the field of PMR this month, because uh, I am passionate about polymyalgia rheumatica. You know, rheumatologists, uh, just at 30,000 feet, this is the disease that we love to encounter because we know that when we make this diagnosis, we can bring dramatic relief and improve quality of life to our patients. Yet at the same time, you know, there are challenges. So over this month, you're going to hear all of these different topics, but we have two questions in our mind as we're sitting there contemplating this diagnosis. Number one, uh, if this patient does have polymyalgia rheumatica, do they have giant cell arteritis? We'll put that aside. We have a lot of experts talking about that this month. Secondly, and what I want to address today is, are we making the right diagnosis? Um, let me dig into this for a, a couple of minutes with you guys. Uh, we know that the clinical picture of polymyalgia rheumatica has some general lack of specificity. We don't have a uh, highly predictive um, uh, biomarker to make the diagnosis. Uh, imaging is interesting, but we don't generally uh, use this. Uh, and there's a big differential diagnosis. People are presenting with uh, the acute or subacute onset of pain. Um, they are presenting with the sequelae of unbridled inflammation. And that can bring with it many things, including uh, fatigue and change of mood and um, uh, 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 disturbances of sleep and this early morning stiffness that we demand to be seen as we make this diagnosis. And there's a big differential diagnosis. You go to the textbook of rheumatology, you'll see things like, oh, late onset rheumatoid arthritis. Could this be lupus in the elderly? Um, could this be other rheumatic manifestations such as, you know, spondyloarthritis? Or what about the degenerative arthritis of the shoulders and cervical spine in someone with just an elevated SED rate? Um, uh, a, a number of these diseases uh, uh, can be easy to sort out and uh, some require more challenges. But at the end of the day, all of those things um, will not be harmed by empiric glucocorticoid therapy. I want to leave you with two must rule outs, and there are others, but the two that we must think about in categories of diseases are infection and malignancy. Infection is the area that we are interested in mostly at my center, and uh, uh, I have been involved in my career in two M&M conferences when medicine used to have M&M conferences of fatalities of patients diagnosed and treated as PMR who ultimately had endocarditis. Endocarditis is a must rule out. I will shout out my friend, Adam Brown, who's done at least five podcasts uh, on his ruminations podcast over endocarditis and the uh, rheumatologist. And why can it mimic it? Patients with endocarditis can have constitutional symptoms. They go on for uh, weeks or months. They can have low-grade fever, which can be seen in PMR. Their acute phase reactants are elevated. They don't have traditional risks for, for endocarditis. I always will think of uh, infection early on, particularly if there are risks, if there are any signs or symptoms that may be suspicious for this, although uh, things like heart murmur, et cetera, are very insensitive. But if a patient does not make that exquisite full house response to glucocorticoids, you better start culturing them up. And uh, the problem here is that some of these cultures uh, just could be culture negative endocarditis, and that always raises the issue of Bartonella. Um, uh, and you uh, may need to go uh, the next step uh, uh, in terms of cardiac imaging and beyond. But endocarditis, endocarditis, endocarditis. The second uh, must rule out is malignancy. Many a patient has sat in the hospital um, uh, being treated for polymyalgia rheumatica and has uh, 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 with incomplete response, weight loss, um, uh, unexplained inflammatory illness, as we call it, the, the uh, FIO, um, 
uh, and uh, we must uh, uh, consider this always in people with atypical features. Where do we go from here? Well, I think that there's some great data from the past five years, some by rheumatologists like George Shedd, who uh, publishes about everything, about the utility of PET-CT. We used to say, oh, we can't get PET-CT. No, we can get PET-CT when we're hunting down malignancies that are occult. And uh, the use of PET-CT in sorting out ultimate diagnosis and atypical uh, PMR um, is um, uh, 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 high up on my list. Um, most of the time we make the diagnosis, most of the time our patients have their disease melt away, but these are the two areas of must rule outs that I want you to think about. Uh, I was happy to chat about it. You know where I'm at, send me an email. Uh, Jack, uh, this is a great series. Uh, thank you for inviting me.